Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Science Monitor, your favorite weekly program on science and technology related news. First, here's a quick preview of what is coming up. India and the Southeast Asia region of WHO officially declared as polio free. A three day ASI program held in Mohali. The event witnesses interesting discussions on universe, stars, and galaxies. World Health Organization releases report says air pollution killed 7 million people worldwide in 2012. Good news for diabetes patients. Indian and American researchers devise a method to regulate the amount of sugar in blood. American Space Agency NASA makes an official proposal for knowing more about asteroids. And in our segment In Focus, we shall discuss more about cosmos inflation or the hyper expansion of our universe. And now news in details. 27th of March 2014 will be a historic day, not only for India, but for the WHO Southeast Asia region. As on this day, India and 11 Southeast Asia region countries of WHO were officially certified as polio free. The formal certificate was signed and handed over by the Southeast Asia Regional Certification Commission for Polio Eradication. Here is a report. India and 10 other Southeast Asian countries were formally declared polio-free by the World Health Organization, WHO, Thursday in Delhi. But this commission concludes that wide polio virus transmission has been interrupted in the WHO Southeast Asia region. Apart from India, the other countries which were given polio-free certificates were Bangladesh, Bhutan, North Korea, Indonesia, the Maldives, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Thailand and Timor-Leste. The certificates were handed over to the health ministers of these countries by WHO Regional Director Southeast Asia, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh at a ceremony. A country is declared polio-free by the WHO if no case is reported for three consecutive years. India reported the last polio case in January 2011. An independent panel of 11 experts in public health, epidemiology, virology, clinical medicine and related specialities constituting the Southeast Asia Regional Certification Commission for Polio Eradication met for two days to review evidence from the countries before reaching the decision. WHO Regional Director Poonam Khetrapal Singh said, the goal of polio eradication was made in 1988. It marks one of the biggest public health achievements. Let us not forget that the war against polio is not over. There are two regions left where polio still needs to be eradicated, she added. Ketsapal Singh said the next target was to eradicate measles from the region by 2020, for which the structure put in for polio eradication can be used effectively. The Astronomical Society of India, ASI, recently held its 32nd meeting in the town of Mohali from 20th to 23rd of March. The three-day event, hosted by the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Mohali, witnessed serious discussion on universe, stars and galaxies in the sky. The program was attended by eminent scholars and students having deep interest in the mysteries of the universe. The 32nd meeting of the Astronomical Society of India, ASI, was hosted by the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Mohali, IISERM, between March 20th and 22nd, 2014. The next couple of days, we're going to have um, many exciting lectures by people who have come from all over India, many institutes from Pune, Bombay, uh, Bangalore, many other institutes also many other universities. A lot of students have come and they are going to present their works. The ASI event was attended by eminent scholars and students having deep interest in the mysteries of the universe. The three-day event witnessed many discussions on various topics. 
The Astronomical Society of India, or ASI, is the premier association for professional astronomers in India and was established in 1972. The society has close to 1,000 members. The main objective of the society is the promotion of astronomy and related branches of science in India. Ever-increasing population in the world has led to a continuous rise in air pollution levels, which has made air pollution the world's largest single environmental health risk for humanity. The World Health Organization has recently released a report on air pollution that says that 7 million people died as a result of air pollution in the year 2012. Here is a report on WHO's assessment. Breathlessness, cough and chest congestion. Common symptoms experienced by many urban citizens across the world commonly attributed to air pollution. But the most recent study by World Health Organization disturbingly reveals that might not be all. According to WHO's estimates, approximately 7 million people died of air pollution around the world in 2012. The finding, more than doubling the previous estimates, means that one out of every eight deaths occurred due to either outdoor or indoor air pollution. With these updated figures, air pollution has become the single biggest environmental health risk across the world. It is estimated that outdoor air pollution caused 3.7 out of 7 million deaths and about 88% of these deaths occurred in developing countries, which represent 82% of the world population. Approximately 80% of the deaths caused by outdoor air pollution were caused by strokes and heart diseases. About 11 fatalities came from lung diseases and another 6% due to cancer. It was observed that Western Pacific and Southeast Asian regions bear most of the burden. In comparison to outdoor pollution, indoor pollution caused 4.3 million deaths with a large majority of the fatalities being in poor and developing countries. Indoor pollution causes death due to strokes, heart diseases and respiratory diseases in children. Several studies have pointed out earlier that women and children in poor households of India are specially susceptible to disease related to indoor air pollution. This was reflected as a global trend in the WHO study too, which said that 54% of the deaths from indoor pollution were of children and women. Bangalore girl Shweta Srinivasan already belongs in a rarefied space that most science students can only dream of. Nobel Prize winning scientist Harmut Michel has offered the Bangalore girl an opportunity to work with him in his research lab at the Max Planck Institute of Biophysics, Germany, where he is the director. The icing on the cake is that the three-month stint is an all-expenses paid fellowship. The fact that India is indeed a rich pool of young talents has once again been proved by Ms. Shweta Srinivasan, who has bagged the rare and prestigious opportunity of working with 1988 Nobel Prize winning scientist Dr. Hartmut Michel. The Bangalore-based student doing an integrated course in bachelor's and master's with a major in chemical sciences from Indian Institute of Science Education and Research in Mohali has been selected for a three-month project with fellowship at the Max Planck Institute of Biophysics under Dr. Hartmut Michel. Shweta Srinivasan was among the 25 Indian students who was selected for the five-day Linda Nobel Laureate meeting last year. As part of an Indo-German collaboration in science, Indian students are encouraged to participate in the Lindau Conference where students from all over the world get to meet and work with Nobel Prize winners in various areas of science. Shweta aspires to study proteins with regard to neurodegenerative diseases and is keen on doing her PhD in biomolecular spectroscopy abroad. And here is good news for people suffering from diabetes. Indian and American researchers have found out a new way to regulate the amount of sugar in blood that will give much needed relief to people having type 2 diabetes. What is this new discovery? Let us find out. The cause and cure of high blood pressure and diabetes has been the focus of study across the world for the past many years. 
Now, in a yet another novel discovery, the Indian American researchers have identified new proteins that have the potential to be targeted for controlling high blood sugar. This finding that could help millions suffering from type 2 diabetes worldwide. This study establishes a role for phosphatidic acids in enhancing glucose production by the liver and identifies enzymes involved in the synthesis of phosphatidic acids as potential drug targets. With further studies in this area, we can expect noble drugs that can help control diabetes. In order to learn more about asteroids, American space agency NASA has recently announced an official proposal worth 360 million rupees. According to this proposal, NASA will be sending robots and astronauts in the space that will capture and redirect the selected asteroids closer to the Earth. This will facilitate collection of samples from those asteroids and hence space scientists to analyze them. Asteroids, also known as minor planets, are astronomical objects that are considered to be shattered remnants of the process of planet formation. These are young rock-like bodies of the solar system, never grew large enough to become planets. Study of asteroids has been considered vital towards gaining a deeper understanding of the origin and composition of the planets and the universe as a whole. Taking a step further ahead in this direction, US space agency NASA has announced a formal proposal worth $6 million for project ideas focusing on technologies that will enable robots and astronauts grab an asteroid from deep space and bring sample close to Earth for further study. This initiative called the Asteroid Redirect Mission is a key part of the NASA's Advanced Technology Development Program that will enable sending humans to Mars in coming years. NASA has encouraged citizen scientists to submit novel and innovative ideas before May 5th and the space agency would reward the winners around July 1st for projects that would wrap up in six months. NASA is already supporting projects such as the Asteroid Data Hunter Contest which is offering $35,000 in awards over the next six months to citizen scientists who come up with improved algorithms for identifying asteroids. In November last year, India took a giant leap in the world of space science when it launched the Mangalyaan into the space. The spacecraft is now on course its journey towards the red planet. Let's get you all the updates on the Mars Orbiter mission. As on 24th of March, Mangalyaan spacecraft has travelled 301 million kilometres in its 680 million kilometer path to Mars. The spacecraft is now at a distance of 28.6 million kilometers away from Earth. It takes 90 seconds for a communication signal to reach Mars Orbiter mission. Mars Orbiter mission's current heliocentric velocity is 28 kilometer per second. Well, time to take a very short break here. We will be back with more science news. So, stay tuned. Welcome back after the break. You are watching Science Monitor. And now our segment Science Express shall take you through an exciting journey that will depict the latest scientific activities in and around the country. Scientists have discovered a weird sharp clawed bird like dinosaur that roamed the earth with the dreaded T-Rex 66 billion years ago and is being described as a chicken from hell. The beaked dinosaur, Anzu Wiley, was discovered some years ago. It was almost 5 feet tall at the hip, measured 11 and a half feet long and weighed up to 300 kilograms and had very sharp claws. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands were jolted by an earthquake measuring 6.5 on the Richter scale on the evening of 21st March. The earthquake occurred some 70 kilometers east of Indira Point. The Ministry of Earth Sciences issued a general warning but said there is no threat of tsunami. On 24th March, World TB Day was observed worldwide. 
On this occasion, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research's Open Source Drug Discovery Project launched the clinical trials of a new combination drug for tuberculosis called the PAMZ. The Phase 2B clinical trials are to be taken up in collaboration with the National Institute of Tuberculosis and Respiratory Diseases. The date 17th of March 2014 shall be etched in the history of space science with golden letters. The reason being on this date, after decades of study, the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics has made an important announcement regarding cosmos inflation or the hyper expansion of our universe. Not only that, the scientists have also given strong evidence in favor of this inflation. So what exactly is cosmos inflation? Let's find out in our segment in focus. The origin of the universe and the notion of an expanding universe have been intriguing researchers and common man alike for decades now. It is widely believed that approximately 13.798 billion years ago, the universe originated as a result of an explosion of extremely hot and dense matter, a phenomenon called the Big Bang, and began expanding rapidly. The idea of expanding universe, popularly known as the cosmic inflation, though globally speculated, lacked evidence, at least till now. Now a discovery that is considered the most crucial cosmological finding of the decade provides evidence for the popular but untested theory of cosmic inflation. One believes that in early universe, the universe is believed to have undergone a very rapid expansion during the very early phase. Now, one of the offshoots of such an expansion is that uh, there is a possibility of gravitational waves. Now, what are gravitational waves? Just like light is electromagnetic waves, which means these are oscillations in electric and magnetic fields. Uh, from Einstein's general theory of relativity, one expects that one can have such waves or vibrations in the gravitational field also. The theory of cosmic inflation was first proposed by the American physicist Alan Guth in 1980, who was trying to answer the question as to why distant parts of the universe were similar even though they couldn't have shared a common history. Guth proposed the cosmic inflation theory that tries to explain the expansion of space in the early universe at a rate much faster than the speed of light. He theorized that 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds after the Big Bang happened, all matter and radiation was uniformly packed into a volume the size of a proton. By the time it was 10 to the power minus 33 seconds old, the volume of the universe had increased by 10 to the power of 78 times, a period called the inflationary epoch. The inflationary epoch lasted from 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds after the Big Bang to somewhere between 10 to the power of minus 33 and 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds. After this event, the universe was almost as big as an orange. The universe continues to expand since then, but at a slower rate. While this theory was poised to resolve many cosmological issues, it was difficult to prove. The early expansion is called inflation. Now, depending on the model of inflation, you have certain amount of gravitational waves and certain amount of what you call density perturbations, which are supposed to have formed galaxies today. Now, the ratio of this gravitational wave uh, in, uh, amplitude to the density perturbation uh, parameters is an important criterion which fixes the model of inflation. Now, researchers of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, using a technique called BICEP-2 telescope, have come up with solid evidence to prove that the universe is indeed expanding. The background imaging of cosmic extragalactic polarization 2 or BICEP2 experiment at the South Pole was used to study the residual energy of the Big Bang called the Cosmic Microwave Background or CMB. CMB is 13 and a half billion years old 
and refers to a field of microwave radiation that permeates the universe. The experiment was conducted to find the proof of the gravitational waves and their effect on B mode of CMB. To find this, a team of radio astronomers led by John Kovac from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics used the BICEP2 telescope from 2010 to 2012. It was equipped with a lens of aperture 26 centimeters, scanning an effective area of 2 to 10 times the width of the moon. Researchers found a pattern called primordial B-mode polarization in CMB. This pattern, which is basically a curling in orientation of the light, can be created only by gravitational waves produced by inflation. Now what these people observed a few days back was that uh, the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is a radiation from very early times, is a relic radiation, that has some information about this ratio and what they found was this ratio is about 0.2. Now this is a very interesting uh, thing because this is one of the best and one of the most direct evidence that such a cosmic expansion took place and it sheds light on the fact that such gravity waves exist. The astounding results of this experiment have been accepted and applauded by researchers all over the world. And scientists are trying to replicate the results obtained by BICEP2. This finding is expected to have significant implications for the field of cosmology. And now we know that our notion of an ever-expanding universe is close to reality. And what has been this week's contribution to the history of science? Let's find out in our segment, History of Science. John Harrison was born on 31st March 1693. Harrison was an English clock designer who developed and built the world's first successful maritime clock. After 13 years of failure, he ultimately produced the pendulum clock in 1773. On the 1st of April 1905, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, that is the IARI, was founded. Originally known as the Agricultural Research Institute and located in Pusa, Bihar, it was renamed as the Imperial Agriculture Research Institute in 1918. After the Great Bihar earthquake in January 1934, the institute was shifted to New Delhi in 1935. After independence in 1947, the name was again changed to the Indian Agricultural Research Institute. It has served the cause of science and society with distinction through first-rate research. The Green Revolution in India began in the field of the IARI. India's most advanced third-generation supercomputer, Param Padma, was launched on 1st April 2003. It was launched by the Center for Development of Advanced Computing, that is, the CDAC. The Parampadma can perform 1 trillion operations per second. Such power was previously only available to countries such as the USA and Japan. So how do you like our program Science Monitor? Well, do send in your comments and suggestions through email. Our email address is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in You can also send us your suggestions by post. Our postal address is Vigyan Prasar C24 Kutub Institutional Area New Delhi 110016 And that is all in today's edition of Science Monitor but we shall meet next week with more dosage of science news and exciting information. Till then, goodbye and take care. <laughs>